Hey everyone, my name is Emma and I am here with the amazingly accoladed Patrice Hazan from Group hey. Hab. She is an amazing physical therapist who is revolutionizing medically based fitness classes. So Patrice, really quickly, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself, just who you are as a physical therapist, what you did before Group Hab. Okay, sure. I am first and foremost a physical therapist. I have been a physical therapist for many years, let's say over 20. And um, as a physical therapist, I practice in a variety of different settings. And I've always been frustrated with the discharge plan of, you know, being excited. We got our patients well, we discharged them with the home exercise program, only to have them go home and you know they're not going to do it and they end up having to come back a few months later to need more physical therapy. So it was a model I could see clearly wasn't working. I know my colleagues, you know, we talked about it all the time about how we had this revolving door of certain patients coming through. And um, actually, even as I think about it, even if they did follow the home exercise program we provide them, I don't feel like a home exercise program is really enough to keep our patients well. So we need to do more. So um, I tried to explore some different options on having a larger organization take my idea and go with it and support me. And I um, was rejected by that. I tried my hospital. Um, I tried, I applied for that APTA innovation project. So all of those options were kind of, the door was shut. And so I went to my husband and said, you know, I just know that we can do more. I know that a group exercise model, something where we can continue to follow our patients would work. And thankfully he supported me. And so just myself, one person, I opened um, Group Hab about five years ago and in a 1200 square foot facility. And I opened with this idea that nobody had heard of. <laughs> and um, so really kind of a little crazy. And from there, I think it just slowly grew. And it was really what made it grow was the product and word of mouth, because it's not like I was really connected with any major organization or anything. So um, I just went from being a regular therapist, which I love being a therapist, um, to owning my own business. So I didn't have the business background either. So um, I just really had the passion and the knowledge of group exercise and really just wanting to do more for our patients. That's amazing. I, what A couple of things I want to say is, is everyone who's listening, if you have any questions for Patrice, please let us know below. We've got about 14 people so far watching, which is amazing. Um, and I know that there's many more people so interested in this topic, but we want to serve everyone here who's listening. So if you have any questions for Patrice, let her know. Secondly, I give you props, Patrice, for just rising above, you know, people saying no to you and you still sticking to your guns and saying, this is an idea that I really think can help serve uh, my patient population. And um, props to your husband too, for being very supportive. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Um, so really fast before we dive into group hab, because I know people are really interested to understand the concept and how it's so different from, you know, other fitness models out there. Mm -hmm. But for you, you said that you really didn't have a lot of business knowledge um, do you have any tips for people? Because a lot of people out there are struggling with that same idea that they don't really know where to begin. We're, we're healthcare professionals, not business professionals. So what were some steps that you did initially to sort of help get you on that track? Well, I would have to say I probably made a lot of mistakes, <laughs> so, honestly. <laughs> Some things I kind of just learned the hard way. So what I'm hoping is that other people can learn from my mistakes and I can save you some of the pain that I went through. Um, but honestly, they're just like trial and error for a lot of things and researching and Googling and asking and um, you just um, have to keep trying. You just, you can't just say, well, gosh, that didn't work. When you own your own business, you've got to figure out how to make it work. Um, the APTA does have some good resources with the private practice section. I'm a member of the private practice section, and they are fantastic for support and resources. Um, I did um, try to contact, like, I think there's, like, what is it, the Small Business Association? And yes, I, yes, the SBA, yep. Exactly. I reached out to them and got some information from them, and um, that kind of helped me. But I will say... It was hard. I mean, not having any business background whatsoever. And my husband's actually a tire engineer, so he doesn't have business background. <laughs> so the two of us, we were, but we were able, if we were able to figure it out, anyone can figure it out. So 
There you go. Good. Excellent advice. Yeah, the Small Business Association is really great. I've taken advantage of a couple of their resources too. I will have to say they're not as good for online. So if you're a blogger, podcaster, um, the Small Business Association is not quite, quite caught up to those trends, but definitely something like this where you're looking more for uh you know, a one-to-one -one business model, they're mm -hmm. really helpful. Um, so Patrice, can you explain in a little bit more detail Group Have and how it's different from anything else out there? Yeah, Group Hub is completely different from anything else out there because it's, first of all, designed by me, a physical therapist. And so what I did was I tried to take all of the different knowledge and things that we do with our individual patients and then combine it into a small group setting. I do have the advantage of um, being a group exercise instructor, and that's kind of what also led me. I kind of blended my group fitness um, past um, work history with my physical therapy, and so that kind of help me design the classes um, but it's different because it is designed by the PT and we also do an assessment process prior so you meet with the PT or it could also be the OT who does the wellness screening and from that if you found that the person needed PT or OT before they started the group classes you could make that referral or you would use the information from the assessment to actually place the patient in the appropriate functional class so there's not not just one senior class, um, there are functionally based um, classes. So the patient will go through the assessment and then they're placed in the class by the PT. Because they're placed in the class by the PT, you know that it is the correct level for them so they can feel confident when they go there that they are going to be able to participate and keep up it, but yet be challenged. Gotcha. So um, really it's a tailored and individualized program um, in a small group setting. Um, so we have the, the assessment and then the design by the PT and then the um, person who's teaching it. I teach a lot of the classes. We have our physical therapy assistants or a CODA could do it or an OT. So you have the opportunity as a clinician teaching the class to use your clinical skills. And believe me, you will. <laughs> it's not easy to teach a, a group class for individuals with chronic conditions and um, comorbidities and such. Um, but that gives the, the person delivering the class also is part of the model too, because they are a you know a clinician and have that background and becoming group have certified. And so they can use their own clinical judgment within our structure to modify specifically for the patients that are there. Awesome, so, that's, um, that's a really good explanation. I sort of have a view and an understanding now a little bit more of how Group Hab runs. Now, I know we have a couple questions here. Thank you, Alicia, for asking our first question. Um, she says, how many varieties of exercise programs do you offer? So within your group classes, Patrice, um, you know, what sort of different classes do you offer? Sure. Um, we offer two major programs. We offer a group have wellness, and that's kind of like I consider it like the meat and potatoes of our program because we know that for um, exercise, you need to have aerobic strengthening, balance, and flexibility. So everyone should have all those components to really meet um, the exercise requirements. So our wellness classes actually have all of those, um, those, those requirements. So we have the wellness classes, and within the wellness, like the group have wellness certification, gosh, there are eight different types of classes. So there's eight different levels. <laughs> And so we have, um, you know, an extra uh, class starting out for individuals who might use a walker or a cane all the way up to um, individuals that are more fit, um, but just concerned about their balance. Now, what I will say um, in my business experience, I found that I didn't have a market for your senior athlete. I mean, and maybe in somebody else's in, you know, community they might, but in, but in mine, we didn't. And I think the reason why is because there's more options for them. I mean, if they're really a senior athlete, they can probably go to the, the sports club. So what, what we found where there was a great big need were individuals managing chronic conditions, individuals that had more um, impaired mobility. So, so the group have wellness has, um, you know, classes from people with a walker. We have um, a step class, a steady hab class, a dance hab class. Um, so we have a wide range within that group hab wellness certification. And then we offer a yoga hab um, certification. So we have a chair class, a power class, a flow class. And then we have a way that we call it yoga hub flex where you can use your clinical knowledge and you can kind of blend the classes. So if you know they can't stand that long, you can kind of mix and match. 
Um, and then we have a core hab class. So that is actually a class designed to strengthen the core. It's very good for patients that have chronic back pain, which there are so many patients that have chronic back pain. That's a really popular class. Uh, and it's also good for people with osteoporosis. So it serves for that too. And then we have a class called joint hab, and that is a class for um, individuals with arthritis, uh, maybe had a joint replacement or planning to, or, or trying not to have a joint replacement, something like that. Awesome. I think that's that you have all these different sort of uh, niches in within your different classes. I think this is just so extremely useful. You know, I'm trying to, as you're talking, I was trying to think of what other companies do this. And I can almost think of, you know, rock steady, but they're mostly just Parkinson's focus. I don't think there's anything else that really is saying you can do exercise despite your pain. You can right. exercise mm -hmm. despite your deconditioning. You know, I, I don't think there's a lot, there's a lot of empowering going on there for these people. And so I think this is, this is really, really good, Patrice, really good. Um, and for everyone out there, um, I was talking to Patrice a little bit beforehand. And so her license model, which we'll get into, allows you to add more classes to this. So, you know, if you are maybe a Tai Chi expert, let's say, uh, or maybe you wanted to do um, maybe Pilates, add in Pilates, like, you know, her structure of group hab is very flexible. Um, and, and we'll dive into that in a second, but it allows you to create, also add to what Patrice has created, your passion. So you yeah. can add into these other ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm sure as group have grows, you can start adding in more classes. It's probably oh, just. Oh, absolutely. There's so, there's like just an yeah. amount of very fun things you can do. And that's what I actually love about it. I love making classes and teaching classes and um, it's so rewarding. Definitely. Well, let's dive into how group hab can be used for some of um, the people watching. Oh, good. And we've got now like 40 people watching. Oh, Woo. Wow. Um, <laughs> those, <laughs> Everyone, this is Patrice's first webinar slash yes. Facebook live. So please if give her some support and yeah. let's see some like hearts and yeah. some like go go Patrice <laughs> in the comments because she, she's really that. talking Thank right you. Now. <laughs> Nervous. Um, so why don't you describe how potentially someone can use group hab to grow maybe their practice or to become an entrepreneur? Um, let's say you're just wanting to kind of um, branch out from your job right now and you're not quite sure, but you just want to kind of see how it goes, then you could get an individual certification where just you yourself would get Group Hub certified. And so you could get the Group Hub Wellness certification, which has that aerobic strengthening, balance and flexibility, eight different functional levels. So really gives you a wide range of classes to offer. Um, you could do the yoga hab, the core hab, or the joint hab. But as an individual, you could get certified and then with that, you could take that certification and you could try to partner with your senior center. You could um, try to partner with your assisted living facility. Um, you could try to partner at another physical therapy, occupational therapy practice. And so that way you could kind of take it mobile. And that would also be good for someone who just wants to work part time because perhaps you could um, try to find a place where you could rent it by the hour or something. So that, yeah, you could just rent someplace by the hour and then you could figure out your price structure with your clients. Now for us, we do the facility and of course group have this facility license um so there that is a bigger program that's all of the classes and all the programs and so with that we offer a membership and clients pay a monthly membership to join our program so if you're thinking about this you could do it by yourself and just kind of tiptoe into it i guess um, or if you really already have a facility gosh this is a perfect opportunity to increase your referral base because Honestly, this model, this business model is so good for patients, but it's so good for your business because individuals come in because they're interested in the group classes. So when you do your individual assessment to begin with, often they're coming in because they responded to an ad or something that said, you know, do you have impaired balance? Try our physical therapy exercise classes. So they already obviously have balance problems that's why they're coming to you so you do your assessment and often they need individual therapy before they can start the group classes so there you go for a referral so you see how that the classes bring in referrals and plus the people that are coming to class if they need therapy they would come to you and they'll tell your friends about their their friends about you so the business model is fantastic for maintaining a private practice and having that diversification because we have um 
patients that we bill, we do individual treatment. We bill Medicare, just like we do traditionally. And then we have our cash-based group program. So it's a good right. blend. Yeah, definitely. I can see this being really great for just all the insurance changes that are going on right now. I mean, reimbursements are just very fluctuating. Uh, they're unsteady. And so I know yeah. a lot of private practices are looking for ways to earn more. So I think this is a really simple solution. And, you know, in business, they always talk about that, the, you know, when you're trying to grow your business, grow your enterprise, look at the clients you already have, or in this case, look at the patients you already have and mm -hmm. what can you do with them? They're already in your door. They already chose you and love you. So how can you keep them coming back? And unfortunately, the healthcare model, or at least I should say the rehab model, we're right. limited in visits, you know, it's six visits. And then, sorry, you know, hopefully you get hurt again, but in this, <laughs> and that's really bad, but in this model then with group hab, you can be like, instead of saying, I'm sorry, we can't treat you again. You say, hey, now we've got this really reasonable priced model where you can continue to come and you can maintain or even further improve what we've worked on in those six visits, in those eight visits. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just continue to treat them. I think this is this is a really great plan and idea. Um, and then for people who are wanting to do it solo, you said basically they could maybe partner with gyms or, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yep. is that you'd, something have your, you'd have to explore your community, um, do yeah. that SWAT, you know, where you look at the competition and your, um, mm -hmm. your threats and things like that. And then you would, um, go out and you just have to hit the pavement quite honestly. And you'd have to, you know, go out and introduce yourself and say what you're trying to do and try to see what type of business arrangement you could have. And, um, try to set something up within your community. But yeah, you could take it mobile. And as a matter of fact, we I do have my brick and mortar facility here, but then I also have a partnership with the Senior Center where we go and we offer two classes. Really, we um, currently are offering like an eight week package for them. So okay. for us, we were able to work out a deal where they pay us an hourly rate and then they ch charge the people that come and we have like a 12 person maximum for that. And um, then that's how we work that. So if you, you could do that without having the brick and mortar. Okay, definitely. Definitely. I, I understand that. Okay, let me dive into the questions here. Oh, how many in a class? Asked Julie. Um, it's a good class, but I would say less than 15. I mean, I think 15 would be like the tops, really, for the type of program that we offer. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, Cindy asks, who offers these certifications? That's an easy question. Uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think maybe... Okay, one one more here, and then I think we let's dive in in a second after um, I ask this question into sort of how exactly people can get these certifications and what exactly the certification includes. But um, Seneca asks, does an OT need a PT on staff to bill? Mm -mm. Well, to bill? Um, well, not for the, if you're just doing the group classes and offering the group classes, no, the OT could do the wellness assessment. And um, then from there, of course, if they needed P individual PT at that point, the OT would make that referral. But if they just needed really to come to the classes and get some overall exercise, they would just use the information from the assessment and place them in the appropriate class. And then the OT could teach or supervise the entire program. Okay, so, got it. Certainly OTs can do it as well. I mean, yeah, it's, it's sort of like you have a wellness model, so you can be an OT or a PT and then yeah. the assistant, someone is asking about what's the assistant's roles. Can they only teach the class? Well, they can, um, yeah, they can teach the classes. Um, they can't really, they could do a screening. They could do that. But if you're going to do more of an assessment, um, because actually with our business, what we do is often we might even do the assessment and bill Medicare for that if we're doing that um, Medicare wellness assessment. So, of course, naturally that would need to be a PT. Um, so the uh, what the um, PTA, if a PTA wanted to take this and let's say go mobile with it, take it and go to their senior center or something, they could do the screen to begin with. And there's certain parameters within that screening. And from the screening, there's um, some basic things that would place the patient in the class and then I would recommend having a PT or an OT that you could follow up and consult with and of course in the screening if there was any indication at all that they needed individual therapy you would want to coordinate with a PT practice somewhere OT practice somewhere gotcha and can the OTs build Medicare for the screening or no that's a PT only you know what? 
really know about that because I do okay. know that, you know, and especially it's probably different in every state because we have okay. direct access. So if someone comes in and this could be the scenario, someone answered an ad from the newspaper, they, they you know, call, they say, I'm interested in these classes. It will come on in for a screening. So they come in for the screening and I'm doing the screening and I can clearly see, oh my goodness, this person just fell this week and they haven't even had physical therapy. Clearly they need physical therapy. So I will just have that conversation with them right there. Say, you know, well, I'm already, you know, identifying quite a few problems. I would really rec recommend that we have some individual therapy first. And so I would just switch gears at that point and no screening. I would go right for um, the full blown assessment to bill Medicare. Um, okay. With gotcha. the screening, if someone, um, you can do lots of different things with that business screen. And actually, we advertise like a free wellness assessment. And then sometimes that will get people in the door because everyone likes something free, myself included. So that will, you know, that will bring them um, in the door. And then uh, we might, um, sometimes we might charge, if you're charging for the assessment, you could always say, you know, if you sign up today, we won't charge you for the assessment too. That's another business thing that I've tried. Gotcha. Okay. Now, um, it, are we, is it possible to have this be all cash? Can this model be a cash model? You could do, if you just, like, let's say if you took it mobile and you had it, you know, where you just rented someplace by the hour, so you didn't have a great big overhead, like a huge brick and mortar place like I do, you could have just only cash. So you could just not even do the individual therapy. You would, you would absolutely want to be connected with a physical therapy practice that you could refer to, you know, okay. because you will certainly, um, give referrals to them. And then maybe this could be where they give referrals to you. Honestly, as we're discharging patients, you know, we're always thinking, you know, where, what is, how's my patient going to continue to exercise and maintain the gains? If you had that relationship with a physical therapy practice or something, when their patients are discharged, they could come to your program. So it would just be a fantastic business relationship. Yeah, definitely. And uh, people have a couple more questions on the billing. So I understand that the assessment or the screening is billed for Medicare. How about the group exercise classes? No, people always ask me that. And I absolutely keep that separate. Okay. And I never, ever bill um, group exercise to insurance. I keep it separate, cash-based. And honestly, I say they're not physical therapy exercise classes as they are physical therapy designed and supervised um, fitness and wellness classes, you know, for individuals managing chronic conditions and such. So I'm clear about that. So we just only take cash and I do have them sign an AVN form, which is a Medicare form that they realize they're um, acknowledging. They realize that Medicare does not pay for the classes, but they would like to have them anyway. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. That makes that, that makes a lot more sense and clarifies that. Thank you. Um, uh, Julie was asking, what basic equipment do you need for these classes? Um, probably this backdrop is a good example. Um, <laughs> that's a nice thing too. I was, I feel like I was so smart starting out because I started out really small, like with what we could handle. Like if you can see this bar in back of me here, I had one of these big balance bars because of course you need that. And then I had one put up along the wall. So I had the bar, um, the um, bars. We had a few mats. We had some free weights, you know, the lighter free weights, um, and then um, bands. And then slowly but surely, like I added like the little steps and maybe some balance discs and the big stability balls. And of course, I started off right with little balls and cones and kind of things that aren't really that expensive. So the startup cost for offering this type of program is are really not that high. You know, for think about like starting a business. It's not like you have to really go out and buy, you know, five treadmills and the equipment is relatively inexpensive. Definitely, especially for geriatrics or maybe, I don't want to say lower level, but, but, you no, know, you know uh, with that type of patient population, you're not going to be using really this crazy no. expensive equipment, crazy elaborate equipment. I mean, so much of my day, I work in a skilled nursing facility um, with, you know, population between 60 and 90 ish years mm -hmm. old. And yeah. I hardly ever really do any, I, I do a lot of body weight, you know, right. it's very simple and, and you can, you can really work them out because I'm mean yeah, to them. Sure. You can really work them out just using the body weight in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They don't need to sit on a machine and do like a bench press or something. Right. Yeah. They need to try to stand in balance and put weight you know, one right. hand over their head and yeah, with the weight and 
yeah, they don't need things that take a lot of money, but they do need some skill delivery of the exercise. And um, unfortunately, I think that out in the community right now, there's a lot of programs that are led by volunteers. Um, like when I think about what was in our community, um, there's the volunteer led exercise at the senior center, which is good, you know, for some people. I don't want to say anything negative about any program at all, but um, our program is different in that really the physical therapy designed and supervised component of it. So we're able to catch problems before they become serious concerns. We're able to focus on things, all of the all of the evidence-based principles that we know that we use with our individual treatment, like intensity of training, progression, all the posture, all the neuroplasticity, all of that, you know, we can incorporate that into our classes. And we have a role all of us to educate the public as to how we're different because this is something new and no one understands it and especially even myself i find one challenge has been when you tell some patients like oh i'm going to that volunteer exercise or they don't know how we're different so we have to educate them and then we have a little slogan here we say like experience the difference because once they come they're like oh my god goodness. I, I've never had someone emphasize posture so much, or I've never, you know, once they come, they see the difference. Definitely. Definitely. I think that where that freemium model is, is really going to be effective for those of you. I'm going to get to more questions in a second, but for those of you that freemium model where you get people in, because I think that's the barrier we have for OT, PT, speech therapists, a lot of uh, any other profession out there is for people understanding what exactly we do and how amazing we are at doing it. You are amazingly skilled in what you do, whatever your profession is. And so we got to get people in the door. So yeah. it sucks, but having that first class be free and then just showing them the transformation get they can get from that first class. Right. Um, and exercise work. I mean, we know that as therapists. I mean, it's amazing when they come regularly. And actually, I have had patients that have made more progress coming to our group classes than they made with me when they were getting their individual therapy. And I think the reason why is because they have that group camaraderie, that encouragement, yeah. that adherence. And the other thing with the model, you can actually see patients for a longer period of time. Our geriatric patients, I mean, that little, you know, six week to eight week period, they can only make so much progress no matter how much therapy they do, because the yeah. human body just can only <laughs> progress that much. But if you give it more time, they can make more progress. So it's such a good model that way. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, Trizal was asking, what if you're just like an exercise physiologist? Um, and not an OT or a PT. What what could you do in this space? Sure, you could actually become an instructor, and you could offer the classes, and you could work with a therapist and um, help deliver the classes under the supervision of the physical therapist. So you would go through the training, and you would follow the physical therapy design program that is actually supervised by the therapist, and you can deliver the class. So you can okay. become a, a certified group type provider. Awesome. Now um, let's dive into a little bit more about these certifications. I know, you know, we've we've sort of glossed over what is Group Hab and how you can use Group Hab and, and who's appropriate to teach Group Hab. Now let's dive into sort of what do you provide in Group Hab to enable people to be able to do this in their clinics or independently? Talk a little bit about the license that you that you've created. Sure. Um, you start off with um, getting some of the theory. So all of the evidence based principles that are involved in group have and how we're different from the community. And um, so you have all of that education to begin with. You get the business strategies and the marketing strategies so that we can help you with the business part of it, which is something important <laughs> to make this work. Um, and then coming into the classes, the delivery of the classes, when you are coming to the group have wellness, well, first of all, you have to learn the assessment process and how it fits with the classes. So that also is included in the group have wellness. So you learn that. Um, and then when you start to um, dive into the classes, there's a very structured way that you learn how to teach group have classes. Because I have the background in music and um, teaching aerobics, so I was able to use a lot of that and um, really through trial and error to see some things that worked and some things that didn't with our frail patients, um, was able to come up with a structure that we have in the classes that we kind of follow all the way through. So in other words, you would um, get certified in say TheraHab to begin with, you would master that and then you move up and you learn the strength hab. And then you might learn the ready hab and then the power hab and then the study. So it's a kind of a step by step process. 
um, we really break down the use of the music because there's certain things that are kind of, um, I guess, intellectual property really for group have, like what we do. It's, it's so unique because music is so fun and can really just make the class. And so we do lots of really creative um, coordination and cognitive and like throwing in a little bit of dance and things. So we um, are really making it fun that way. So we first kind of teach you about using music with exercise, how to use music for an exercise class. And then you get the structure and then you get the ways we change it. And um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Are you getting feedback, Emma? Uh, let me see. Here, let me, I can switch my mic. This is not getting that feedback, but. What's that? Talking. Okay, let me see. Okay. Let me switch my mic. Okay. Okay, try now. That's much better. Yeah, much, much better. Okay, Thank good. you. Because <laughs> I was hearing good. myself speak and so it's a little distracting. Um, no, no problem. Yeah. So um, with, you know, the group hub wellness certification, you'd get all the business and the marketing and the theory, and then you would get actually diving into the um, certifications and how to actually teach the classes. And that's one thing it's um, you're going to leave with a product. I mean, you have, you're leaving the certification and you actually have a product that you are going to be able to take this class with outlines and knowledge of using the music and you can implement it. So it's not like you just are going to go learn some concepts and some ideas and, you know, which are good. I don't need to like criticize that, but, um, you're actually going to leave with, okay, this is the structure of the class. This is how we do the warm up. And within that, there's some variations. This is how we do the aerobics. And within that, you're going to use your clinical judgment with who you've placed in the class. And then you're going to use your clinical judgment on how you can modify the structure to make it creative and fun and um, a little different every single time. But yet you have the structure. So you're not going to have to think, oh, what am I going to do in this class? No. Um, there's an outline. We have different outlines for the exercise component. So you can pick a different outline. And then within that outline, Line, it's a guideline. So, of course, we want people to use their clinical judgment and skills and modify that as they need to. But you have an outline. So, you actually have something concrete that you're going and you are offering. Um, so, that's really how our, our certification works. And you would do, I have an extensive, extensive online part of the whole certification because there is quite a bit to it. I mean, I don't want to sugarcoat that. There's, especially if you've never used music, you know, because you have to learn how to kind of give cues and call out and how to okay. put that. And it's not for everyone. So you have to really think, do you enjoy, you know, a small group of patients that you can kind of laugh with and, you know, because it's not for everyone. But if you enjoy that, it is so rewarding and so fun. So. Definitely. Yeah, so with the um, online, how the certification works is I will, you would go to our website, you can sign up and pay, and then I will send you a link to our online training. And so that link to the online training, you start right out with all of the theory, all of the history, all the articles, everything else has been printed about Group Hub as well, so you would know all about that. And then um, you get the marketing strategies, business strategies, and then you're going to dive into the um practical part of actually delivering the classes. And so you'll see a picture of me telling you, okay, this is how you use the beats. This is how you use the music. This is, um, these, are, these are our recommendations for music. You know, within that you can choose what would work best for your clients. And then you're going to see a picture of me doing it, me telling you how to do it. And then you're gonna see pictures of the classes. And then you're going to have outlines that you can follow while you're watching an actual class that we were delivering. So you really get um, a good feel for how it works. And then once you have kind of gone through all of that online training at your own pace, Place, then you can schedule to come to a uh, certification, a live certification here at our clinic. Awesome. So is all of it online or is it about 90% online and then you do the live with you at the end or is that just optional? Yeah. Um, I would say maybe it's like, let's say 80%, maybe 80, 90% online um, okay. because there is just so much that you can, um, you know, the content, a lot of the content, I would just be repeating myself over and over. We have a good training program online. And so you get all of that basics there. And then we also have something called um, the Group Hub Hub. And so that is actually a network of providers so that you can collaborate with other providers across the country. And I am looking for therapists that are kind of pioneers, entrepreneurs, who would like to help me spread this model because I can't do it alone, I, nor do I want to do it alone. I would love to have some people that are passionate about making a change, um, taking a risk, and actually already took the risk, and I showed if I can do it, anyone can do it. You just can't even imagine 
how much I grew in five years. Okay, me, only one person in this, I was like, you know, answering the phone, cleaning the bathroom, I was doing everything. And then now it was like four years later and we're um, clinic of the year for South Carolina. And oh, have- congratulations. So we have, um, you know, lots of staff and I'm presenting the model at different conferences and things. So um, I kind of already did the hard work. I mean, I th- not to say there's not hard work. There's still hard work to do, but you've created um, the I, structure and people yeah. people just have the setup now and yeah. they can just follow your lead. Um, right. When I, I started, I, had, I didn't have a structure. I had to kind of figure it out. And so that was kind of the part that was also hard. And I did um, lots of things I found out the hard way and were able to really come up with like the best way to do things. Yeah, no, that's that's understandable. Some people are asking, where are you located? They want to come. They want to come. <laughs> we, um, we are in Simpsonville, South Carolina. So if you're familiar with okay. South Carolina, that's by Greenville. Um, and so that's where we are. Gotcha. Now, do you have to go to South Carolina to complete the certification or can that all be online? Um, well, um, possibly if you have a huge history in teaching aerobics and teaching exercise, maybe I could work with you with a Zoom video. But otherwise, I like the idea of the practical hands on, especially if you have never taught a class, because honestly, just my experience in training people here in the clinic, um, that is the best way because then you can try and you can practice, you can call out and um, it's nice to actually also be around other network providers and uh, there's a good sense of um, collaboration and camaraderie and kind of work all in this together to try to change the way we we practice and we offer as therapists more for our patients like we're really i guess groundbreaking and really from the grassroots you know really um tired of like a, i not to say anything too negative but like you know tired of big organizations yeah. and we're really frustrated like we're going to do something about it and so we're going to do something about it grassroots level other therapists like me that have their heart in it that want to go out to seniors in the community and offer these skilled exercise classes and provide something that's different. And what I feel is that over, you know, over time we'll get insurance to pay. I mean, we're going to show how much this works and they'll pay. So definitely I I can see the positive upward trend of this trajectory. Um, uh, Someone was asking, are there any CEUs involved? Are you able to get CEUs? Um, currently, I just have CEUs for South Carolina, but we are planning on getting CEUs for other places. And the more people we have sign up, obviously, the more CEUs we'll get. Um, if we had a lot of people in one location wanting to sign up, we'd definitely try to get the CEUs for that. Yeah, that makes sense. And for those of you out there, um, even though this is only right now CEUs provided in South Carolina, normally how I've seen it and what I've heard is that basically you can take this, take those CUs and then just present it to your board and you'll still get CU credit. So so um, a lot of uh, different webinars are doing that because it's just impossible. There are so many states out there. And so it's okay, uh, like Rock Tape, I've seen this for them and other companies don't have CU certifications for every state. So you can always take this and if there's at least one state that already has accepted this, you're very likely to get it accepted in your other states. Okay, good. Well, that's yeah. that's good to know. So, yeah, save, save you some work there, Patrice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You have to approach each individual state, and that is tedious. Yes, yes. Um, let me see here. I'm just looking through the questions here. Do you think we can be as successful as you if we don't own our own clinic or company? Yes, I do. I do. I, um, if your heart is in it and you're willing to work really hard, I think you can. I think you have to be smart with your choices and um, hit the pavement and you'd have to probably get some good contracts and relationships with senior centers or assisted living facilities. Or if you approached um, a physical therapy practice that's already established, I mean, they would be crazy not to partner with you because they are going to get patients. And right now I happen to know firsthand in the physical therapy practice world, it's brutal because the hospital systems tend to keep all of the patients. And so we get all of our patients pretty much from direct patient marketing. That's how we get it. Just patients tell other patients and they heard about us. And so that's how we get our patients. So if you were to approach a physical therapy practice that's already established and tell them what you'd like to do, I cannot imagine how they would not want to partner with you. Um, I'm actually presenting this um, at the private practice section. And then I'm also presenting this model at um, CSM this year too. So, yeah, so to answer your question, yes, you can 100. If I can do this, 
anyone can do this with if you as long as you have desire and you know you have the educational background and you're willing to work really hard i mean i won't sugarcoat that it is you know but once you if you what's that adage like if you love what you do you never work a day so i love what i do and so i never work a day <laughs> and you have the model like like patrice yeah. when we were talking uh, you know off camera she's really devoted to this and so the really neat thing about this is that it, this is not like a standard course where you take it and then you're sort of done. You know, yeah. she has this continuing learning uh, in the background where if you need more advice from her, more support, you get lifetime support and advice from her to continue to grow your group hab uh, facility I clinic. Be, actually, I want it to be a whole network of clinical providers. So we support one another. So it's something to belong to. It's kind of like a movement that I want you to feel like you belong and you are. You can um, collaborate with other providers about what's worked for you business-wise, what hasn't, how any ideas, and then we can continue to throw out new ideas and things like that. So it's really kind of joining something bigger. Definitely. And uh, Jane Bird says, yep, great idea, Jane. You could run an ad in senior center newsletters, you know, just put flyers in senior centers. I mean, I, there are so many amazing avenues yes. for this. Awesome. Um, and then, uh -huh. no, no, yeah, go no, go for it. No, 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 go ahead and answer that question. Then I'll, I'll say. Oh, um, Megan, I think we asked this before, but she said, do the participants get a standard eval by a PT to determine their safety or balance? Yeah, they have, um, what we do for sure is you do a wellness screening. So with that, it's a basic screening. And then if it's flagged at that screening that they need more, then they would get individual physical therapy prior to participating in the group classes. And I will say that happens the vast majority of the time because people are actually coming, of course, because they've heard about it and they're concerned about their balance. They're concerned about falling. They don't like to go to the gym. They've all had that experience where they can't keep up. And so um, they, that's what brings them here. And so when you're doing the assessment, you find any deficit that would require individual therapy, you do that first. So, so you have to, at a minimum, have the screen. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I, I really think this is um, it's it just an amazing idea um, that you can really use in so many ways. You know, I don't think this is just one use. I think you could have this and work with senior centers. I, you know, I work with the VA. I really think that this is something you could approach your local. Um, VA about because so many times when I discharge veterans, they do get outpatient, but then there's not anything after that. And the VA just doesn't have enough benefits to continue right. to provide that. So this is something where I would totally partner with someone who's doing group hab because I trust yeah. what they're doing. I mean, total knees, total hips. My poor grandma is going to have to get a total knee and they're just, they just want her to go home right away. She's 85 years old. And so something like this, I could see group hab doing yeah. like total knee classes, status post total mm -hmm. knee, status post total hip, yeah. you know, I, I, so many. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that's really just so wonderful about this model, I can't emphasize enough, is the camaraderie and the support they get from one another and how that helps them to be adherent to their exercise and it helps the total outcomes because it's a different type of setting. They check on one another. They're supportive in that way. And one thing that I actually love about Group Hub, how it evolved is... Um, you know, like I said, I learned along the way. What I started with is not exactly what I have now, but I started off offering classes um, for patients that had Parkinson's. And what happened was when patients came in with um, the diagnosis of Parkinson's, I would show, you know, do the assessment, and then I would show them all of the different classes we had. And at that time, I called them something different, like well and fit or, you know, whatever. Um, and then we had like a Parkinson's class. And a lot of the patients did not want to go to the part. They wanted to come to all the other classes. So we, from just actually a business model, I didn't have the interest interest in that. And so our program is not really based on a disease or a diagnosis like that. It's based on functional capabilities. So when you come, to, when the patients come to a class, everyone is about in the same functional level. So they're participating at the same kind of basic intensity and um, level, but yet it's not about their disease. If they have any disease specific questions, they can do that at the assessment or pull you aside, but it's all about everyone coming together in such a positive way and enjoying exercise and um, supporting one another. Awesome. Can you go over, um, this is one thing that we forgot to mention. So thank you, Joseph. How much you charge for these various classes? Like how much is a screening and then the wellness classes? 
well, the screening, you can kind of play with that. I mean, and when I say play with that, I mean like you could try different things and see what might pull in more patients. Sometimes we offer that free wellness screening and people see free screening, so that brings them in the door. I've also done where I've offered, you know, the, the screening for like $75 or $50. And then if you sign up for our contract of classes, um, then we waive that. So um, that's for the screening. Um, for the classes themselves, like if you offer a big, like if you're a facility provider, you offer that big comprehensive um, array of classes that are, you know, the medically based classes, we offer a membership. But you really need to kind of be a facility provider or if you're an individual provider, have enough classes there to make it worth their while. Because I mean, if you're going to ask them to pay a hundred dollars a month, you kind of need to have enough choices for them to want to pay that. So um, our price structure for our clinic here is a um, hundred dollars a month, and they sign a year-long contract, or they could do um, they can pay up front like a higher amount, like three months or six months, or they could pay the whole year and get like a little break. But most people choose to do the hundred dollars a month and they sign the year contract. So that's how it works here. Now our um, relationship that we have with the senior center where they, um, we offer the two classes, we do the eight week kind of series of classes. Um, they pay us $50 an hour and then they take care of, they, um, you know, bill their clients. Yeah. And I think that's a great model for, you know, if you're just starting out and maybe you don't have your clinic, you know, that's a great model where, hey, 50 bucks an hour, that's a really good rate. And then you can just build upon that. Yeah. Um, build your clientele that way. So then that way, that kind of gets you getting your client base. And then when you go to open your own place, you already have a following. Exactly. And Jane, yep, once again, she's got more great ideas. I like you, Jane. Um, she says, I'm in home health and PT. And so I really when people don't follow through their exercises, I would love to have them go to group hab, for example, to just yeah. be able to send them to a place like that is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yes. Uh, Ace, uh, Patrice does have them sign a waiver. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah definitely. Um, so Barry asked, do you have to do the certification first or can you do one of the subsets like yoga hab? You can do the yoga hab because maybe you just want to offer yoga hab. I mean, everybody's, um, business needs might be different, you know, what your goals are and what your community um, is needing. So sure, you could just sign up for the yoga hub or the core hub or whatever you think you might need. Awesome. I like that flexibility. I like that flexibility. Do you want to go over um, how do they sign up? Should I screen share the website, Patrice? Would that sure. be helpful? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, they can just go to our website and then um, basically go to where it says group hub network provider and then you can see the information about becoming a group hub network provider and the different options and there's a way to um, sign up right there. Great. I am pulling it up. I'll hit my screen share here. And there's um, on there too is um, some information about the live certifications that are coming. I mean, awesome. and of course, the more people we get involved, the more we can offer. I mean, I would love to be able to offer throughout the country, have maybe someone who's interested in possibly, you know, being the um, train the trainer kind of thing, you know, where you would have someone across the country who's helping to spread the model and offering certifications live other places too. Yeah, definitely. I see this, you know, there's a lot of different models you can do. Can you see my screen? Can anyone see my screen? Yeah, I think um, click on the, like the group hub network. Okay. So you would go to group hub network here. Yeah. Yeah. And then click on, um, click on be, become a provider that group hub network is supposed to go ahead and click on that. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you go back up and you click on group hub network, see if, well, this actually is, you can click there and you can go to individual provider and facility provider. But if you go back up, um, and uh -huh. then it says group hub network, you're supposed to be able to click on that and it has, um, it should come up gotcha. about the basic thing about, yeah, there you go. And then Perfect. you can scroll down and it talks about the three different steps to join the movement and become a provider. Oh, here we go. There we go. This is the money yeah. shot right there. That's yeah. helpful. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, then if you go to the individual page, um, then that will take you to the certifications and you can register there. And then for the facility, I didn't put a way to register for the facility um, license on the website because it is a bigger purchase. And so usually people would want to talk with me a little bit first. Um, so I've never 
put like six thousand dollars through the website <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so we don't do that through the website and if anyone has any more questions you can see how Patrice is so passionate about this. So, I mean, if you're concerned that this may not be quite right for you, because I know this is sort of a unique setup for OTs, for CODAs, for PTAs. And so if you're at all concerned about what exactly your role is to offer these certifications, you know, simply reach out to Patrice. Um, I can put in the links later Patrice's email or how do you want them best to reach out to you, Patrice, if they have any more specific questions? Sure, they can um, reach out through email, which is just my name, Patrice Hazan at groupab.com. So you could reach out through that. You can reach out through our website. If you go to the contact page, um, that information will get to me as well. And then you can certainly call me as well. Actually, we have, of course, our phone number on the website as well. You could reach out and call. Perfect. Gotcha. And here's, yep, here's the individual certifications. So if you're interested in these certifications, they are right here. TheraHab, StrengthHab, ReadyHab, and PowerHab. And if you get the facility um, license, you know, you can really start adding in more of these certifications. And I'm sure, Patrice, you could probably join up with, I could see you joining up with maybe a Pilates instructor to eventually add that and all mm -hmm. sorts of different, different hey, things. I love you? this. Yeah, we do have the core hab, which actually is kind of a unique blend of the yoga, the Pilates, and spinal stabilization exercises. Um, one thing about the group hub program, um, like I've mentioned, it really is for individuals managing multiple chronic conditions or complex medical needs or someone who needs a little bit more knowledge from the therapist. So it's not really for your senior athlete. Um, that's not the market that Group Hub is trying to cater towards. I feel like there are more options for those individuals. And so um, if you're planning on joining Group Hub, we're targeting more of the seniors that don't like the gym, that need that extra help, that are afraid of falling, that type of demographic. Excellent. Um, Cindy asks, do you work with certified personal trainers as well, say beach body trainers, or is it mostly just PTs, PTAs, CODAs? Um, I work mostly with PTAs and um, PTs and CODAs and OTs, but we do certify, I just certified today even, a um, exercise physiologist. So, um, you know, if you have, you know, that bachelor's degree in some type of um, health-related field or fitness-related field, um, absolutely, you can um, come and teach our classes and be part of our team. I've had, I also had a um, group exercise instructor who was working here, too, teaching classes as well. So it doesn't have, it can be someone, like I said, with the um, exercise background in that bachelor's degree in that exercise-related field that could um, do this. Awesome. Well, everyone, if you're interested, check out the links groupab.com and go to network right here, become a provider, and you'll be able to see more information on individual as well as the facility certification. Um, Patrice is a wealth of information. So contact her if you are, you know, thinking about this. And if you have any more questions, she, she really would be happy to answer them more. So I actually want to diverge here for a minute, Patrice, and selfishly ask, how the heck did you create a certification? I always think it's amazing how people people create these certification courses. So can you tell a little bit about that process? I know it's probably like hair racking. No, I mean, like, it's pretty much a long process. I mean, when I actually opened Group Hub, I was thinking, I guess, you know, begin with the end in mind. I actually wasn't thinking that this only needed to happen in Simpsonville, South Carolina. I was completely thinking this needs to happen. This needs to happen all across the nation. So as I was developing my classes in the program, I had that in mind. So I was developing and I was kind of, you know, saving and working on it from the very, very beginning. Um, so I developed it over time by trying things from teaching people for one thing and by teaching the classes and seeing how what is working for these patients. And a lot of the classes, to be honest with you, like I had some clients or some patients that I was just thinking, how in the world am I going to be able to get them to do this aerobics and this dance? And so I trial and error worked, you know, just to see what would work. And then in terms of the training, I had the challenge of thinking, okay, I've got the exercise instruction background. I already have been teaching group exercise forever. And so I know how to do all that. But what if I'm teaching a PTA that doesn't have that? How do I break it down? And so I kind of developed that 
through working with PTAs that have never done it before. And so I got feedback from them, like what was, what helped you? What, you know, made it easier? What was hard? What, you know, what would make this a better process? And then I tried to think of what is a structure that works that we could use that makes group hab cohesive. So that there's basically, there's some things that are just distinctive to group hab that you're gonna see that is really nowhere else. And so how do I take that structure and make it work throughout the entire program? And so um, that's what I did. So I guess that's kind of a long um, answer to your question, but um, it's not, yeah, it, it took a while and it took trial and error. So. Well, your website looks amazing. I feel like you, you as, as a newbie entrepreneur, like you say, with a husband that does tire engineering, um, you wow. have a wonderful professional website here. I Thank love your branding. I love how everything looks. I think you've done a, done you. a really amazing job here. Um, and one more last question about entrepreneurism, because I know some people are interested in the certification, but some would also maybe eventually like to create their own certification. Um, sure. What is... What is like a, the number one tool you use right now to help you grow your business? What is the number one tool I use to help me grow my business? Um, well, it's kind of hard to say because I have kind of two aspects of the business. I have the one where we're teaching instructors and we're selling the license and certification. And then I have my own clinic. So the number one thing to really um, build my clinic, absolutely, is offering the very best program you can. And so when people come in, they love it. They are getting better. They have a sense of community. They feel like they belong. I hear that from my patients all the time, that they felt like they didn't have anywhere to exercise before, and now they feel that they do. So um, to build up my clinic here, the thing that I think I've spent most of my time doing versus like, you know, paying for ads and this and that and the other, I tried to make sure that my classes were the very best I could make them and that every patient had the best experience they could coming in the doors. And that was what built my clinic here. And it was word of mouth. And these patients are amazing because honestly, if they like what you're doing, I mean, I have little postcards by the door, they have them in their purse, they're telling everybody, they're always telling me, I told my doctor and, you know, so they market for me and there's nothing better than that. So it's just wonderful. It's just such a win-win thing. Um, so... Good, good. And then one more, one more question. Um, what would you give as advice? What would be your best advice for someone who is interested in um, these instructor certification courses or the facility uh, certification? My best advice would be to go for it. I mean, there's always going to be risk involved in anything you do. Um, you know, you only live once here. We only have, you know, one opportunity. You need to embrace every opportunity you have. If you're passionate about not liking what you're doing right now, if you can see where there's a problem, like this isn't working, but yet I'm going to work every day and doing the same thing and everybody else is doing the same thing, I'd say go for it. Take a risk. I've shown it can work. I mean, there's really... I want to say nothing to lose, but um, honestly, I mean, and then it's a good business. So, so I would say go for it. Awesome. There you have it, everyone. Patrice has created a proven model and all you have to do is take the instructor certification or the facility certification and start treating people and building your own business. Um, thank you so much, Patrice, for being here, for being, you know, so, so detail oriented and giving us so much amazing information on how you created group hab and how people can use group hab to just help more people and also grow their own business. I appreciate it. And everyone, if you have any questions, uh, you can email Patrice. Um, you can go to her website, grouphab.com. And uh, please comment. You can keep commenting also in this feed. I'll also be posting this to YouTube as I know Facebook is getting, it can get a little disorganized. So check out the Alternative Healthcare Careers uh, YouTube page as well. And that will have this video um, maybe tomorrow or the next day. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you.